Welcome back my friends for another fun reloading video. Today is the next video in our series with our 357 Magnum and our Lee 358158 round flat. Once again we're using the CCI 550 Magnum primers and today we're going to be using 2400. This has been recommended by several of you so today we're going to give it a try and see what we can come up with. Today we're using our good trusty arms core brass. These have all been three times fired, so today will be the fourth loading on them. They've already been prepped, sized, all that fun stuff, and again we're primed up with the CCI 550s. And here's a look at our bullet once again, the Lee 358158 round flat. The past couple videos I was calling it a flat nose, but it's an RF they call it. So round flat. And these are sized to 358, which I also said 356 in a past video. So sized to 358, and they are the round flat. They currently weigh about 161 grains as cast and coated with my range scrap alloy. So this is what we're using today. Here we have a look at our Alliant 2400, historically known as Herco 2400, but that was all bought out by Alliant long ago, and they changed some of the recipes. However, the Lee manual still lists Herco 2400, so I don't know if I need to be using that data when I'm looking up a load, because I didn't use that information today. I wrote it down, but I'm not going to use it, or rather take their uh, maximum into consideration, because it's higher than all of the others I was able to find. Anyways, 2400 here. You can see it's not a flake powder. These are actually very tiny extruded little itty bitty sticks. In the 4227 video I said it looked like 2400. Not in the way of the color but how it's uh it's actually extruded but they're really really small. It's almost a flake. So yeah, speaking of our load data and the Lee manual listing Herco, they have a maximum charge of 14.8 grains. And I thought that looked a little bit high because Hornady lists a maximum of 14.3 and Lyman only goes up to 13.5. So the Herco 2400 data listed in the Lee manual, I didn't quite take into consideration for this. So my maximum today is going to be 14 grains. And we're going to start at 13, go to 13.5, and then finally 14 grains. So we've got our first charge here with 13 grains, but I need a funnel. So, excuse me, camera. There it is. Don't even need to move the camera. Sorry. 13 grains of 2400. Got a, got a dog hair on it. Sorry about that. So let me know what you guys use for your 2400 and your 158 grain load. Some of you had commented in previous videos, but I think with other bullet weights. So let me know what you're using because I'm just kind of starting low and we're going to see where it takes us and we can always go up from there. Here's a look at the case fill and yeah, not, not, not quite too full compared to our dum-dum here. And this was listed, the uh, max charge was listed as the accuracy load in the Lyman manual. So hopefully we'll get some good results with this. Let me get all these weighed out here and we'll get on to seating the bullets. As usual, we will take a look at our cases here just to make sure we all look about even. Nothing is missing a charge, nothing's double charged. And I think with our 2400, if we double charge it, we'll probably be overflowing. And that's a good thing. So we are ready to seat our bullets here. So real quick, we'll set up our seating die with our dummy round. Now our die is set up to our dummy round. Our second charge, once again, is 13.5. Let's see how close the 1cc scoop will get us. 
That's pretty good right there. Alrighty. Quick look at the case fill once again. It is getting up there, but I think we're still going to not quite be touching the bullet. And probably not either with our maximum charge, but we'll take a look when we get there. Wow, that one heaping scoop is dead on. I like that. I bet I can't quite get it again, but we'll try. That'd be a good one to keep with you in your uh, apocalypse bag, you know. Just throw a scoop in, you're good to go. Woo! Or, you know, just your camping bag, your outdoor pack with your lead loader, which I do want to get. I want to get one of those one day and reload some at the range just to do it out in the field, you know. And that one's dead on again. All right, there we go. Another drive by of our cases. We can see they all have their charge. They're all pretty much even. Let's get on to seating them here. Here's our second charge there with 13 and a half grains. And one kind of hidden benefit of powder coating with different colors is easy identification during load development. You know, you can always write it on the case like I'm going to, but just at a quick glance, you can see that these are clearly two different groups going on here. So if you are powder coating, try mixing up a couple and getting some different combinations, and then you can use those during load development to sort of visually differentiate between your loads. Third verse, same as the first and the second. So there's a big old scoop in there, not quite enough because we're gonna trickle it up there, roughly to there. Excellent. And yeah, that's getting up there. We'll just, uh, I'll show you the case fill once we get to verifying all of our charges at the end. Here is our last charge of 14 grains. I don't think we're going to be compressing yet. Our 13 and a half grain charge, we still had some shaker action you could hear, but we'll try 14 and I think we'll still be safe. So let's get on with the seating. And yes, these are beautiful. Would you just look at that? Okay, we got all those good. Time to get to a crimping. And we'll just install our die to the last sort of known-ish setting and I'll leave it loose there and we will work it down from there, but that's a good starting point as long as you have your lock ring in a familiar spot or if it hasn't moved since last time we should be close to our crimp setting is all i was trying to say there holy jesus yeah that seemed a little rough i wonder why that's definitely not our setting wow <laughs> <laughs> oh wow wow what an idiot at least this is our starting charge do you uh is this safe to shoot uh is that a little uh hmm maybe we should pull this one <laughs> oh man that's good stuff right there okay we'll just back that out and start over with our crimp setting yeah, it, it's supposed to just barely go in, and I was literally jamming it down like a, like a, mmm. Okay, now it's touching. Look how far off that was. Now we can barely go down a sixteenth or so at a time. And get it dialed in from there. This is a good start. I think I'm going to go a little bit tighter. Yes, yes, almost. Okay, there is a reasonable amount of crimp, I would say, compared to, 
That kind of hurts. I'm... <sighs> well, you guys can learn from me. And don't uh, trust where you think you left your die last time. <laughs> yeah, okay, anyways. Now that we have our setting pretty well dialed in, we'll just verify it on our next case that hasn't been worked over and over. We'll verify that, and then we can lock down our lock ring so that we're consistent throughout the rest here. Okay, let's uh, let's knock these out. Let's get out to the range. Let's do this. Okay, so we're all crimped and loaded and ready to go. And I'm not going to lie, this one here is a little embarrassing. But, uh, you know, wouldn't be any fun if I hid that from you guys, so... We'll probably pull this later and measure the bullet and see what kind of ridiculousness we, you know, caused here. But I'm lucky that was our starting charge there, so we'll still get four shots with uh, the chronograph data. We'll still be able to see how it might group if I can shoot worth a darn. But we're ready to go out to the range. I'll see you here in a minute. Welcome back my friends. You'll have to excuse the wind today, but we are back out at the range all by ourselves Not another soul is here today Anyways, we are testing some 357 magnum loads here Ruger GP 100 with Alliant 2400 with the Lee 358158 RF Stick with me, we'll get some chronograph data and I've got a target out there as well to see if I can get them to group it all. So let's get at it. Alrighty, so we just got done shooting our groups here. So here's our first charge of 13 grains. We have about a three inch spread here, a little bit to the right. I think that's just me. Anyways, we had an average of 12.33, extreme spread of 51 and standard deviation of 19. Moving on down, 13 and a half grains, we can see our group sort of, sort of uh, wanting to tighten up. We still have about three inches, but it's uh, not quite as spread as this one. So we had an average of 1265, extreme spread of 41, and a deviation of 15 feet per second there. And finally, at 14 grains, this sucker really tightened up. We had an average 1287, extreme spread of 43, and a standard deviation of 16 feet per second. But here's one shot, two shots, three, four, five, all right there. And that's a, a two inch spread there. So we can see as we increased our charge, we started to tighten up and tighten up. And then finally we end up with this nice uh, two inch group here. All three of these sort of touching right there. So I think I'm gonna maybe load up this charge again, but I'm kind of being stingy with my 2400 right now. Crap's been on back order for like two years, so I don't want to be blowing through it. But anyways, this right here is a nice load. I might have to revisit this one. Well, let's get back to the bench. Okay, so we're back at the house, and just like I said, out at the range, kind of just tightened up as we increased our charge. I like that. We look at our brass. Don't really have any pressure signs. This was our low group. This was our high group, and all the primers look the same. Just barely starting to flatten, but nothing too bad there. We could probably go up another half grain or something if we wanted to. But realistically, I'm pretty happy with this. That's just my abilities to shoot right there. But if I can uh, get them all closer together and do my part, it looks like that looks like a decent load. I did shoot the one that we over crimped the hell out of with the first group. And it didn't, didn't seem to really throw off the velocity numbers or the spread more than these other groups really. They're both about 40 to 50 as far as extreme spreads. But this case fire formed out just perfectly. But yeah, this case fire formed out perfectly. It's not cracked or anything. So I'm gonna reuse it just like I would anyways. But uh, yeah, for now I think I'm uh, gonna try this 14 grain load again. Yeah, 14 grains. CCI 550 Magnums and the uh, whole bunch of these bullets we just cast up the other day. So yeah, I got to size a bunch of these still, but we'll load them up here for the Magnum and uh, probably try this load again. 
Anyways, guys, if you enjoy this sort of content, feel free to uh, like the video and subscribe to the channel. You can also support us over on patreon.com slash dummy round. Thanks for hanging out, guys. We will see you in the next video. Have a good one.